1973 was Ellender's best year at Tulane. All-American defensive tackle Charlie Hall led the way to a 9-2 regular season and an invite to the Astro Blue Bonnet Bowl in Houston. Basically, the 73 team was a team that basically gelled together with the talent that we had. Uh, the guys all came together and came to become a, a great year for us. And, you know, there was games in there where things was tough, but we was able to turn the corner. So I think basically it was a team that was gelling together with the talent that we had, and it came together and became to be a good year that year for us. Steve Foley's running and passing made the difference that year. Heroics included a game-winning TD pass over Duke with nine seconds remaining and scampering for a Tulane quarterback record 181 yards against Vanderbilt that assured Tulane of a Liberty Bowl bid. Foley's and Tulane's success was assured by a big offensive line composed of Ed Mickelson, Malin Harrell, Mike Owens, Mike Arthur, and Steve Wade. Tackle Ed Mickelson. We were pretty big. Uh, I think we averaged about 265, 70 pounds. Uh, we were about, I think, 6'5 at the tackles. Uh, Mike Arthur was about 6'3, 6'2. We had, uh, I think, the, the shortest fellow was uh, Mike Owens, and he screwed up our average a little bit. But uh, and Steve Wade was in there, and he was about 245 and about 6'3, 6'4 again. So we had a pretty good offensive line, pretty big offensive line. Charlie Hall anchored the defensive line. Mark Oliveri wreaked havoc in the middle, and Rusty Chambers led the team with 153 tackles. The three spearheaded a defense that was stingy and tough, holding five opponents to six points or less, including three shutouts. One of those shutouts was Tulane's biggest win ever, a 14 to nothing victory over Orange Bowl-bound LSU, ending a quarter of a century drought. With Steve Foley injured and out of action, backup quarterback Terry Looney was thrust into the starting quarterback role. It would be Looney who would evolve the hero by throwing the winning touchdown pass against LSU. It was right before the half, and, and it was kind of a situation where, you know, Billy Laird looks around and says, okay, Looney, you're in. And, you know, and I go on, I'm, I'm on the field, and it's less than two minutes. And I remember we had a play call that was, uh, I was sprinting into a slot formation, and Mike Foley was supposed to go down the sideline and clear it out, and Tom Fortner was going to trail him. I'm supposed to hit Fortner <clears throat> trailing Foley. And uh, I sprint out, and, and as soon as I come off the, off the line with the ball, they jammed Mike at the line of scrimmage, which that meant, you know, to, you know Tom was dead in the water, too. And the protection was really good, and Darwin wasn't even a factor in the play, uh, you know, to start with. And, and, and I'm sitting there with all this time, and all of a sudden I just see this hand come up through the middle, and, and he's sitting there wide open, and he was so open, that it's one of those, do you drill him the ball or do you loft the ball? And I almost got caught in an indecision on what to do with it and, and put too much air under it. And the safety almost was able to make a play on the ball because he was that wide open to start with. You know, you didn't want to miss him. You know, it's one of those easy ones to miss. I saw him score. That was, that was one of the greatest sights I think I'd ever seen because, you know, LSU had lined their band up at the end of the end zone. They're ready to come out. Well, Darwin scores, and then, you know, he's standing there, and, and Tom Fortner flies up to him. I think four band members are still looking for their teeth. Uh, but, you know, it, it was just a great sight. Uh, you know, it's one you'll never forget.